What it do, drink God, I swear Vezo. Hey, welcome to my episode of Silver's TV in my neighborhood. We on the six. Drink God, yeah. People excited to see me right now because I barely come to this motherfucker. I don't even step foot in this motherfucker no more. Not because I feel like I'm too much, it's just ain't no place for me. I made it out, ain't no point in making it out and going back. All the rappers, I gotta get that understood. We ain't got nothing to prove no more. What we got to prove, we done made it out. So yeah, they're excited to see me when I'm in the hood. I ain't here every day. I buy property, fix them up, and make affordable living for everybody that can't afford it. And that's the main initiative, and that's what my mama motivated me to do. The biggest misconception about Detroit is 8 Mile. 8 Mile is the hood in some parts of it, but like, people from out of town think Detroit is just 8 Mile. Like, we got 6 Mile, 7 Mile, Finkel, Dexter, Linwood, East Warren, West, there's so many different hoods that play a way bigger part in the city of Detroit than just eight mile. We on six mile, we in Detroit, we in the hood. It's the block I grew up on, Sanford and Bradford. This the house I grew up in since we first moved to Detroit. You know, came straight over here. I've been here ever since. This where I got all my motivation from. This where we struggled at. This where I fell on my face at. This where I learned, this where I got back up. This where I jumped off the porch, crawled, walked, everything. I told my mama I was gonna be a millionaire, get rich, and buy the whole block. I just closed on this house two days ago, so we about to start fixing on that. A lot of motherfuckers think like we just be spending money, just spend it and jacking our money off because they think we young, dumb niggas, but you know, nigga work hard for this shit and just come from nothing. This shit be like a dream. Like, we dream about this shit. Blood, cry, sweat, everything for this shit. So, like, some shit we just buy as a trophy. You heard? Nigga still smart with that money, got a lot of investments. Like, I ain't only pulling Maybachs up on my block, bought my block. We getting ready to get this house too right here. As of now, I don't own that house. So Detroit Land Bank, get with me. When I say we, I mean me and my brothers and my mama. We all doing this as a family collective. It ain't just me. They spend their own money. They put their own money in. Everybody even, like we all even around the circle. My brother 40 bought this house. And we all, like I said, we all put in, fix them up. Rent them out, do whatever. You know, a lot of niggas be trying to make it seem like they just was completely poor. I feel like we weren't poor because we had food to eat every night. My mama kept shoes on our feet. You know what I'm saying? Hot food on the motherfucking table. We went to school. Anything we asked for for the holidays. You know, we grew up. We grew up Christian. You know, and then we converted to Islam. But we had, you know, we had beautiful Christmas before we understood what Christmas was. That's another story though. It's too, it's too easy now to, you know, just use your mind and take advantage of that talent, that mental. You take what you apply in the streets, you put that shit in business and learn how to grow. That's my godmother right here. She kept me out of trouble. Well, she tried to, the shit ain't work. She did the best she can do. We at the famous Zorba's County Island. Everybody from Detroit, Michigan, know about Zorba's County Island. If you ain't from, if you don't know about Zorba's, you're not from Detroit. It's the most famous restaurant we got down here. We made this motherfucker famous. Donna been having this restaurant since I was a baby, you heard? My aunt really caught cases up in this motherfucker, all type of shit, you feel me? It's our love right here. She the heart of our hood, in real life. Donna the soul of our hood. She really for our people. My homeboy, Jeezy, rest in peace. He, he, shot, he shot somebody in his eye up here before, right? You know, and um, think about this situation, right? It ain't about the fact that he shot somebody. We ain't glorifying that. This is, my, this is my best friend. We came up here leaving the club one day, and he, be, you know, he passed away. He, he got in trouble for us, so this ain't nothing like niggas speaking on something that shouldn't be spoken on. Got into a fight with a guy. We playing so much, we making fun of GG. We telling him the dog got the best of him. G came up here, shot dude in the eye. <clears throat> right up here. Um, you know, we know, we know, we, we, we knew the, we knew the building at the time, you know, Donna would have cussed us out. She would have got on, she don't play that shit. And, you know, I was hurt two different ways because I disrespected her. Well, we disrespected her building, you know, and she did so much for us. So that hurt me to see that we hurt her for one, you know what I mean? But the guy Gigi shot in his eye, Gigi got killed a year later. That guy came to Gigi's funeral, spoke and forgave him at the funeral. That shit touched me. I can. I, that's, every time I think about Gigi, I think about that. I ain't gonna say that brother's name, but you know who you is. I got real respect for you, real love for you. 
that movie made showed me a lot about pride. This the same restaurant I came up with the name Ice Star Records. Me and my partner Webbo, no cap, we were saying E. And so much happened up here for me. Like the shit made me emotional, like a lot, like shit that I can't even speak on. A lot happened up here, you know, and I mean good moments. You know, uh, bad moments, but every bad moment we learn from that. I get something out of every situation, especially the bad ones. Well, uh, my homeboy B. Allen, he was helping me out with my career, him and my partner TJ. They started me off like with the music and shit, like what my brother did. And then, you know, years later, once I grew up and, you know, started maturing and doing my own thing, I ran into B. Allen and T. And we started a record company called Star Status Music Group. Soon as I caught, I went to prison. And uh, I ended up catching, I ended up getting hot while I was in prison. Like, you know, I, and I was in the county, so we ain't got cell phones and shit like you was getting the feds and shit. You know what I mean? So like, I remember the first time I went, to, the first day I went to prison, it was just regular, you know what I mean? It, it was just some normal shit. So I was in the dorm and um, shit was just normal, right? I mean, I'm on the dorm for 30 days. And I uh, put in to, to go to this drug program or whatever. Cause you can do a drug program and during a drug program, you get to leave every day for three hours, go to this program, come back. So when you do that, you gotta go to the trustee dorm. So, um, and you can't go to trustee dorm without getting a job. Boom, I'm in the dorm for 30 days, go get me a job as a trustee. The first day on the job as that trustee, I'm passing out trades. Everybody in the jail went crazy when I came up. I mean, banging on the cells with light, true story going crap vaso vaso it, 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 it fucked me up like my mind blown i'm just confused you know what i mean i, I know what's going on but i'm like bro what the fuck you know so um i end up calling my i called my girlfriend at the time and i tell her the situation she say baby you the hottest nigga in the city right now i'm like you playing she like no for real you the hottest nigga in the city remind you just just not even 30 days ago shit was just normal for me I officially stopped hustling at that time. I didn't want to deal with the streets at all. You know, my uh, my wife was pregnant with my daughter at the time. I was done taking risks. I was done risking my life and my freedom. I had children to think about. Well, a child, just one at the time to think about. I had a wife to think about. A couple of my homies got killed, you know, and me not having no financial help at all. I'm not hustling. I ain't got nothing going on for myself. You know, I just, I just fully gave up. And um, my partner Webbo, like, I'm telling him, like, bro, this shit might not be for me. He like, man, this shit is for you. You just got to be a boss now. You got so used to niggas paying for your career and niggas doing all the work. It's time for you to step up and be your own boss. Start your own label, bro. Believe in that shit. You know, you, you got this buzz going on how to make money from this shit. So we sat right here, came up with that name. Niggas been on since. Always. Hey, I, can, I, can I tell them something? Mm -hmm. I ain't going to go in detail. <laughs> Would y'all believe we used to hustle together? <laughs> nah, no, for real. We really used to hustle together. We used to get money together. In the streets, together, us. Uh, you know, when I was hustling and shit, like, uh, I owned a dispensary, a car wash, and a restaurant all around the corner. I had all this shit. 24 years old, but it was so much going on in the streets. Like, uh, you can record if you want to. It was, uh, it was so much going on in the streets. Like, I got guys pulling up on me. You know, just extra, bro, I'll do whatever for you, bro. I'll catch a body for you, right? It's what I'm just like, yo, bro, what the fuck? Hold up. Money coming so fast, right? But I I wasn't ready for the type of what that shit was bringing. Shining was cool. You know, I was a rapper, so I added on to my rap name. And, you know, I, I, you, I was one of them niggas who really thought it meant something to live your raps. I used to think like that. I used to think that shit counted. But now I understand that shit foolish. And one day... Um, I was driving home from my car wash and I was just so stressed out. This was the day that 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 guy pulled up on me, you know, like literally like he would I mean, if I'd have told that man go across the street and kill, he would have did it. I ain't know that man from a can of paint, you know what I'm saying? But everybody knew where I was at because I was promoting my businesses. 24 years old, car wash, restaurant, dispensary, across the street from each other. I pulled over on the side of the road and I just started crying. And I didn't know why I was crying. And I asked God, I told God, I appreciate the money that you give me. I appreciate all of this, but I don't want it this way. I don't like it. A couple of weeks later, I got indicted and I lost every dollar I had. And I was so happy. I was so happy because I knew right then and there, I would never in my life do nothing else 
illegal. I would never ever sell nothing again. I would never involve myself around niggas who I who I can't count for their acts. You can't account for nobody acts. You never know who you're around. You know, I'm a rapper. I take pictures with everybody. You know what I mean? But I would never involve myself daily around niggas who I might think, you know, doing this and doing that. I knew that day I was gonna make that decision. And I was fucked up for a couple years after that. And then I turned into a multi-millionaire, all legally. And here I am, I'm happy with what I got. I've been praying for the wrong things. I've been praying for money when I should have been praying for peace. But God don't give money. But if I was making money from praying, who was I praying to? This building, like uh, when, they, when we first got um, the building, my homeboy Prince, he owned it and shit. So I just helped him build it up and like do all the promotion and shit. That's how I got like all my knowledge when I opened my own dispensary, Six Mile and shit. So, you know, we really like tied in like from the ground up with the whole company and shit. Man, when we started this bitch, bro, this bitch was literally from from like that wall to this uh to this door right here. Not even four years later, got eight locations, all major locations. All right, so like with the space, like like I say, it was bro idea and shit. He had hollered at me about it a long ass time ago about just doing more like a trap museum, but more on a more Detroit style. You know what I mean? And like I say on the gallery side of things too. Like for instance, right, when I signed the Motown Records, it was the 60th anniversary, the 60th year. And uh, Barry Gordy had got like some special jackets made for everybody that was a part of Motown Records up until that point, like Temptations and Stevie Wonder, all those people like our grandparents listened to. So by me being a part of the label at the time and the only artist from Detroit even signed to that motherfucker, only rapper period, you know what I mean? Like directly to Motown, I got a 60th anniversary jacket. Little, little items like that. We're gonna have that jacket in there and, and put the backstory behind the jacket and you know, the mental space I was in, you know, the, the feeling I had receiving this jacket. It's not just about the jacket, it's about the record deal. It's about being a part of a company that's so major based out of Detroit, you know, Motown. And you know, our culture means something to us and everybody don't understand our culture. Like, you know, when people see see a chain on me, they just see a chain. But they don't know what risk I took to get this chain. They don't know what this chain means to me. I got something engraved on the back that might say, rest in peace, Corey. You know, and that's my cousin, C. Head. That's who got me, made me a believer in a lot of shit that I'm doing right now. You know, so we just want to let the items tell the stories for themselves. And um, like I say, bro, brought me in on it. This was something he had thought about and already, he already had the building. Being from Detroit, like, developed me as an artist, mainly because of surroundings. You know, I feel like at the end of the day, all hoods the same, all streets the same, every ghetto the same. You know, whether I was from Detroit or any ghetto, I feel like I would be who I am. But culturally, you know, I took a lot from Detroit. I got, I got all my motivation from making mistakes. Everything I rap about be shit that I done did in the past or shit that I seen. And you know, my whole life was a mistake at the time. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, as far as my music from then and now, I, I talk about the same shit, I just talk about it differently. You know, I talk about it more raw, more straight to the point, you know, more, ain't no sugarcoating on that shit. You know, we just tell it how we see it. And, well, I signed with Motown when I was in the halfway house, leaving from federal prison. It was cool, it was a learning experience. I learned a lot. I had to learn a lot and, you know, I got to see that side of the music industry, just how it worked, you know, like the, the major label thing. It worked out good because I learned a lot, but now I'm currently independent and I feel like everything worked way better that way. Well, the clarity, when I dropped that, that was just more like a verbal vlog of our everyday life at that time. Everything we were seeing and watching and doing, I just was saying that shit in the song. I, I, I do, every time I do a collaboration, I do a song with somebody I really want to work with. So like, like honestly, and I ain't trying to be like politically correct. I, I really fuck with everybody I do collabs with because it be shit that I be wanting to do. I did up the scope um, when my man's had got out. 
was at the studio kicking it. As soon as I did it, everybody in the studio was just like, you gotta put that bitch, put Dirk on that bitch. Shit, I did it, he did that shit fast. Shot a video. My new single, Play For Keeps. Shit, that's mainly about like, with anything I do, I make sure I do my best at it. And you know, if I'ma go hard, I'ma go all the way. I ain't gonna have step nothing. That's what I mean by play for keeps. Like, you know, when I'm coming, when I come, we coming. The rap game, you know, whether whether any business I got going on, whatever industry that I decide to jump in, whether it's the metaverse, NFTs, real estate, music, you know, I'm playing for keeps. When we play, we playing to win. So that's really what that statement means, you know, play for keeps. I think everybody should be like that. You should always go in the tension of, you know, mastering whatever it is you got any interest in you know mastering your craft play for keeps shit as far as like detroit getting the love that we're getting right now and just like you know having all the eyes on us that shit count you know you gotta understand like niggas like me babyface ray you know what i mean like a lot just a lot of niggas like we've been grinding for so long pushing this pushing this same agenda gt PZ, all us you know so to see it finally come into fruition and to pan out the way that it's panning out, that shit just amazing. You know what I mean? Like, it's like everybody turned. We got so many big artists out of Michigan right now. It literally, it ain't never been like this. Never. But it's just like, it, it, it mean more right now. We're having social media. And you know, the, the impact just different. My plans for the rest of the year right now is just stay active. Just stay growing. Stay grinding. I just wrapped up a new film. That's my new movie called Tag. I'm, I'm in the film industry, like, real heavy. And I'm doing this shit the independent way. And like, you know, with me, independence ain't about making all the money. It's just about learning and growing, you know, with your craft so you can be able to teach other people. If, I, if I'm if i not doing it independent way, then, you know, I got, that's like having a major label. You know, they're going to do all the work for you versus you being hands on and, and, and 10 toes down in the business and learning this shit as it go on. But, you know, to go back, you know, we're just dropping hella music and, Mixtape at the mixtape. I got Rich Off Pints 3 coming soon. You know, then I'm gonna drop my very first album. Shot a lot towards like the end of the year. I want my legacy to be for my kids. You know, that's it. Um, you know, usually when people speak on legacies, that's more so of how do how would they want people to remember them once they done doing what they doing? How would they want people to think of them? But with me, it's like I don't care what nobody think about me. You know, what other people feel about me don't matter to me. It's about my children and God, you know, and God being first. So I just, I just, I'm going to leave a legacy for my family to the point where I can just sit back and, you know, me and my wife, we can just chill and, and enjoy life and let our, let my children take over everything. And they finish building out the companies and, and, and making the companies bigger for their kids and their grandchildren, you know. So as far as a legacy for me, it's just about leaving one. That's it. So much shit that was supposed to stop me and make me give up. That's just the shit that made me go harder. I tell people all the time, prison was the best thing that ever happened to me, and I mean that.